What's up everybody, TCM here back with another video and today I want to talk about the CISSP exam and how I passed it in a week. Now everybody has their own motivations for wanting to do the CISSP. Uh, maybe your employer is forcing you to do it because it looks good on paper. Maybe uh, you're wanting to move into a managerial position and you think that this will help you on your resume. Uh, me personally, I needed it for what was called the PCI QSA. PCI being the payment card industry, which is the uh, industry when you deal with any sort of credit card payments. So we have the PCI standards and the QSA being the qualified security assessor. So basically, if you meet a certain threshold of credit card payments, you have to go through an audit and a QSA is the person that does the audit. So I'm doing this so that our company, TCM Security, can be uh, QSA certified and so that we can do assessments, get more business, it opens up a bigger pipeline for us. So my motivations might be a little bit different than yours, but I think that the experience of the exam will hold true across the board. So we're going to get into uh, my thoughts on the exam, what I used to study, and how you can also hopefully pass the exam depending on your, uh, your learning style and your experience as well. But before we get into that, please do consider uh, leaving a comment, hitting the like button, hitting the subscribe button, hitting the bell. Same thing every time that I ask you to do. We're over 300,000 subscribers now. Absolutely insane. Really appreciate the growth and I love you all. Uh, we're going to go into a quick ad really quick and then we're going to jump back and talk about the CISSP exam. I'd like to thank IP Info for sponsoring this video. What is IP Info? Well, it's all in the name. IP Info provides accurate, up-to-date IP address information, including geolocation data, VPN detection, abuse contacts, and other data types in a fast, clean API. You can see here, I just typed 8.8.8.8 .8 into IP Info, and I immediately got results back telling me exactly what the host name was, where the region and city was, etc. IP Info has been doing this for over nine years, and they handle over 40 billion API requests every month. Just look at the numbers scrolling by. These are requests happening every single second. 1.3 billion, in fact, in the last 24 hours. They also provide a bunch of free features and tools that can be super handy for getting data quickly. One of the most common use cases for me is to actually just hop on Linux and run curl. For example, I could just run curl, HTTP, ipinfo.io and then just the IP address that I want to run like 8.8.8.8 .8 or you could just run it with ipinfo.io and get your own public IP address information instantly. If you want to play with the data yourself I'd honestly just recommend grabbing the ipinfo golang client from github. You can get it from github.com forward slash ipinfo forward slash cli and run some commands. A quick demonstration of that might be just running IP info and then 8.8.8.8 .8 and you'll see it immediately comes back with results. It's an awesome tool and again, we really thank IP info for sponsoring this video. Okay, so let's talk about the CISSP exam. The CISSP uh, certification requirements require you to have five years of experience in two of the security domains and there's eight different security domains or you could have a degree and four years of experience. So this is meant to be for people that have experience working in the security field. Uh, there are a lot of people that will take the exam prior to having this experience and they can get what is called an associate, but they can't claim the CISSP title until they've met the actual years of requirements. So with that in mind, this is a managerial level. This is an exam for people that have experience in the field. So I think when you hear that a lot of people say that this is a difficult exam, don't get me wrong, it is a difficult exam, but if you've been working in a management level or you've been making business decisions, it's not as difficult as people make it out to be. I think where a lot of people get hung up is in the security related field, a lot of us are technical minded. So we'll go into this exam thinking about technical answers and what the technical solutions might be to some of these things. And that's the wrong approach to this. The right approach to the exam is thinking about it like a manager would think about the exam uh, or making decisions like a manager would in a real world scenario. Uh, so you have to put the technical aspect aside and think about what's best for the stakeholders, what's best for the business, uh, as opposed to what's best for that situation right then and there. You're not going to get hands on technical with a keyboard if you're a manager and if there's a problem, you're not going to go get hands on most likely and go fix it. You're going to have uh, certain protocols and policies and procedures that you're going to follow in order to make that work. 
So in understanding that, it makes the exam and the approach a lot easier. Typically with the exam, there's usually two question or two answer choices on a question that you can eliminate, and then it becomes a 50-50 decision. Now, there are up to 150 questions on the exam. 25 of those as of right now are what are beta questions or like throwaway questions. Uh, the other 125 you're scored on, and they have this exam that kind of is adaptive, right? So if you start getting questions wrong, then it starts to ask more questions about th that domain. Um, if you start getting questions right, it starts to make or give you questions about it, that domain that you're getting questions right in. It gives you harder questions to see where you're at. Nobody knows the true algorithm. Nobody knows how it fully works. But you have a minimum of 100 questions to a maximum of 150 questions. And unfortunately, you don't know if you pass when the exam stops. You have to do the walk of shame over to the uh, exam person and get a printout and see if you pass. Uh, me personally, I passed at 100 questions, which is awesome. I honestly wasn't sure if I had passed or failed. You could have told me both and I would have accepted it either way. Um, but thankfully, I was able to pass at uh, 100 questions. But even if it takes you past 100 questions, that just means that the algorithm hasn't decided yet whether or not you should pass or fail, but you're still within the ballpark because you can, again, fail at 100 questions if you're doing uh, if you're doing terribly on the exam. So with that in mind, um, for for studying purposes, I felt really comfortable with a few of the domains. Um, one of the domains was security related, and I've done a lot of penetration testing. I uh, own a pen test company, so that was very familiar to me. Um, another one of the domains was related to networking and uh, design, and I was a network engineer for some time, and a lot of that was familiar to me as well. Um, so you start to pick out some of these domains, especially if you worked in the field, and it becomes a little bit easier because then you just have to fill in the knowledge gaps with where you're lacking. So hopefully if this, if this message goes to people who have been working in the field and who are thinking about taking the exam and who have some experience. If you do not have any experience, if you don't have any managerial experience, you don't have any really security experience, this exam is going to be hard as hell. There's no other way around it. This is a very difficult exam. Um, if you're taking this before having four to five years of experience and you're passing it, good on you. But I would still be concerned about what you really know versus what you just kind of regurgitated, if that makes sense. Um, this exam, I thought, was beneficial from a standpoint of it did teach me some things. It taught me um, concepts and ideas and procedures that I didn't even know about or didn't think about and made me go implement some of this in my own business. So I think it's great. It's a good way to uh, assess your managerial skills. But it is one of those things that they say is a mile wide and an inch deep on the topic. So it doesn't go really in depth. It just covers a lot of things. And you have to know a wide variety of topics, some of which, you know, I'm not so certain really applies to managerial concept. But, um, you know, I'm not the creator of the exam. So. With that, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the resources that I use to pass this exam and talk about my experience on passing it, and then we'll kind of wrap up and have a conclusion as well. Okay, full disclosure, I have no affiliation with any of the things I'm about to show you. Nobody's paying me. These are truly what I use to pass the exam. The first thing that I use was what's called Boson. It's a CISSP uh, test bank. It is 750 questions or consists of 750 questions and it costs $99. Um, sometimes you could find like a Black Friday deal or some kind of deal to drop the prices on this, but I think $99 for this is pretty fair, honestly. Um, I don't know how much I can show, so I'm just going to open up the little exam sim environment, but I'm not going to open up any of the questions. If this is kind of small for you, I'm sorry. I don't know of a way to really make this bigger. Um, so you have five test banks, right? And each of them are 150 questions. So that totals your 750. You can choose to do each test bank, and then you can go into study mode or simulation mode. Study mode allows you to take the exams and see the answer when you say show answer, which is really beneficial. And you also have the simulation mode, which takes you through a uh, real world exam experience. So it kind of gets you in the feel of the mode. I think you have three hours. You have 180 minutes, I do believe. Let me see if they tell you that. Uh, you do. You have 180 minutes. So with that in mind, it kind of gets you ready to, hey, how do I answer these questions in a uh, reasonable time and get you geared up for that as well? You could do custom exams and random exams of 150 questions. Me personally, I use study mode for the most part. What's so nice about Boson is the questions on the Boson simulation, um, while they're not similar to the questions in the exam, 
they are very similar in the format. Okay, nothing is going to prepare you exactly for the questions on the exam, but this does give you the format and the feel and the vibe of the exam, which I think helps a lot. And the really nice thing about this is it allows you to see not only why the answer is correct, but why all the other answers are wrong. So if you have four choices, this gives you those four choices um, and you pick answer A. And if answer A is correct, it tells you why. And then it says, hey, B, C and D were wrong because of this. And that is incredibly valuable. I think it's worth the $99 and worth purchasing if you're going after this. OK, very similarly, uh, say that three times fast. There is a uh, application out there that's called Pocket Prep. Now, this is for your phone. I'm on the Google Play, but it also is for the Apple Store. Uh, you can come in here and just download this. You can see I have it installed, but I don't have any advanced purchasing. So I'm just going to show you this here. Uh, basically, you have a test bank of like, I don't know, 800 to 1,000 questions somewhere in that ballpark for the CISSP. And you have to pay $20 or so a month. Let's see, it's in here somewhere. Yeah, $20 a month, which I just used it for the one week. But if you use it for a month, it's still worth the $20. What this is, is really just extra questions. Now, the one thing that Pocket Prep doesn't do very well is that the questions don't tell you why the rest of the answers are wrong. That's where Boson, I think, does incredibly well. Here, Pocket Prep just kind of tells you, hey, here's why the answer was right. Here's where you can reference this in the official study guide and where to go find it. Um, but for me personally, I liked using this because it was an easy way to do like a 10 question quiz if you're uh, you know, you're just waking up in the morning or, you know, you got extra time or maybe you're on the bus or in a car or somewhere where you can just do a, a few seconds, you know, take 10 minutes, two minutes, five minutes. Uh, most of my quizzes ran two to three minutes for 10 questions. So you can knock these out and then it tells you what categories you're doing well, what categories you're doing bad, and you can kind of go from there. Now, both with Boson and Pocket Prep, I think I was scoring around 70 to 80 percent on the, the tests. They're much harder, in my opinion, than the real exam. Boson is very technical and technically minded, and Pocket Prep kind of is too. I think both of those were a lot more difficult from a technical aspect, as the real exam isn't as technical. It's more managerial and logical thinking than anything else. So um, if you're scoring lowish or you know low to medium on this, that's absolutely okay. Uh, try to get the score around 70 to 80 percent. If you're doing 90 percent, go take the exam right away because you're I would say you're definitely ready. OK, moving on to the next resource. Now, I found this gentleman, Pete Zerger. Um, he just released this course on March 18th, which is awesome. It's an updated 2022 edition for the course, um, and it is a, an eight hour course. Um, hopefully we could throw some views his way. It looks like he's only got 20,000 subscribers. Um, I think this is awesome. I didn't watch the whole thing, but what you do is you go in and you can find the sections that are in here and he's got it nice and neat, which is awesome by domain. Um, you can just click on the sec section here and say, hey, I want to review asset security. Maybe I'm not very good with asset security. Me personally, I was terrible with the software development. Um, I don't know my development life cycles very well and memorizing those wasn't the most fun part of the exam for me. So. Um, you know, you can click through here and kind of look at the high level overview and get an understanding for that. Um, lastly, there is this great video here by uh, Kelly Handerhan. I'm probably messing her name up a little bit, but um, she works over at Cybrary or at least has courses on Cybrary. And this one's from 2019, but it's very similar to the course on Cybrary, which I did do. And I'll talk about that in a second. Um, this is why you'll pass the CISSP. And she goes into the reasons of mindset and thinking and what you should, what approaches you should take. And it's just like an easy way to get a few points. And it's an easy way to get some easy answers out of the way, right? It's a quick way to just understand how the test makers want you to think like their test. I think it's worth watching at least once, maybe a few times, even maybe the day before or even the morning of you taking your exam, just watching this short video and just getting back into that mindset because that's truly what this is is you got to get into that managerial mindset in order to pass this exam now i will say i did start the cybrary uh course i thought her course was great i got about halfway through and then the platform completely wigged out on me um and i was not able to get back access to the platform and take the course i had to put in a help desk ticket and by the time that it got resolved i had already passed the cissp so I'm sure her course is great. Um, I think Cyberary is like $50 a month. 
if you want some extra material i think it's there um you could definitely take her course otherwise the pocket preps twenty dollars boson's 99 so we're at 120 dollars and the youtube video that i showed you previously is free so we're thinking about there as well so again when we talk about the cissp it's really about getting familiar with the mindset and the way the test is going to ask you questions I think Boson sets you up very well for the approach of what the questions are going to look like, what kind of questions you might get, and why the answers are right or wrong. I think Pocket Prep is one of those apps that isn't as great as Boson, but it still allows you to answer questions and understand where you uh, may be weak and may be good. And it's a quick way to get like 10 questions in. And you don't have to be in front of a computer. You don't have to sit down for 150 like you do Boson. You can just knock out 10 and feel good about yourself and just keep studying and um, I really like that platform. And then you could fill in the blanks with the video, uh, the video learning. Now, me personally, I am a visual learner. You put a book in front of me, I my mind goes a million miles an hour. I have to read a page five times. I just don't like reading. A lot of people recommend books, and that's fine. I've heard the 11th hour is good. I heard the official study guide is good. But I didn't use those in my experience because I'm not a reader to learn. I'm a visual learner. I'm a kinesthetic learner. I like to get hands on with things where I can. So doing as many questions as I could until I was blue in the face and really trying to understand the mindset of the exam really helped me pass in the long run. And really, that's what you need to do as well. Whatever your learning style is, the end of the day is you need to do a lot of prep questions, a lot of them like Boson. Pocket prep, do them till you, <laughs> you're sick and tired of doing questions and really understand because you can memorize these questions over time, really understand why the questions are wrong. When you're, if you're getting them wrong, understand why, or if you're getting it right, understand why the other ones are wrong. Be just because you knew that specific situation doesn't mean it might not get flipped in the question. And then you don't know the correct answer because one of the other answers is now correct, if that makes sense. So you just need to get in the mindset. And really, I do recommend this exam for people that are experienced. Otherwise, you're going to have a hard time. Lastly, if the exam is worth it is completely dependent on your situation. Um, I'm very indifferent on this exam. If I wasn't forced to get the certification, I don't know if I ever would have gotten this. It looks good on paper. It looks good um, in terms of hiring people and maybe a managerial aspect and and all that, but at the end of the day, you also have uh, a lot of membership fees that you have to pay. You have continuing education credits that you have to pay. The exam itself is $800, not to mention the training that you have to pay for and all that. So um, if you've got an employer paying for the, the fees and the dues and all that stuff, and you think you, this will improve or enhance your career, um, I'd say go for it if you're managerial type, if or maybe an auditor type as well, right? But if you're just a person who's technical, always wants to be technical, then I don't know if this certification is worth it at all for you, unless you have some specific career goal where it is required. So food for thought. Otherwise, uh, I think it's best to say that it's situationally dependent, but totally passable within a week if, if you have security experience. Um, but I, I think your mileage varies. Everybody studies a little bit different, but these are the resources I use. And hopefully this video was informative for you. So that is it. Until next time, my name is The Cyber Mentor, and I do thank you for joining me. Peace out.